All right. Hello, STEM families and scholars. Uh, Mr. Tyler and Mr. Santella are back at you with another edition of Getting to Know. And today it is Getting to Know Miss Morris, who is Woo! our first grade, uh, one of our first grade teachers at STEM. Miss Morris, how are you doing today? I'm good. Um, yeah, pretty good. So <laughs> excited to do this and nervous for the questions. <laughs> oh, no, don't be nervous. Yeah, yeah, you'll be all right. I promise you. All right. Well, we're, I'll go ahead and I'll get us going with the first set of questions. They're very simple. They're kind of the questions that we ask everyone. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and have you start off with your name and how long you've been at STEM. Okay. I'm Mrs. Morris or Jen Morris, and I have been at STEM. Um, well, I started my, I did my student teaching at STEM. So technically two and a half years. Um, so I did my student teaching. Um, for one semester, and then I joined as a long-term sub for the full year last year, and then now I'm a, officially a first grade teacher this year, so technically two and a half years. Awesome, and where are you originally from? I'm from Broomfield, Colorado, so right here. I, I live in the same town that I grew up in. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I live on the same family farm that I've lived on my whole life, so yeah. I understand that. Um, Tell us about your family and including any pets. Okay, so who lives with me now is my husband, Matt. Um, if anybody ever sees him, he is really tall. He's six, seven, six, eight. Um, so it's hard to miss him. Oh, wow. And then um, I have two dogs. I have, they're actually joining me here. I have Steve, who is a two-year-old um, English cream golden retriever. And his real name is Captain America, but we call him Steve because that's his yeah. human name. And then we have our nine-year-old, I have a nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel Gypsy, who is um, my pride and joy in life. And then, like I said, I have my parents, um, and then I have a sister who has a five-year-old son, and then my brother-in-law, and then my brother has a um, six-year-old daughter who's actually in first grade this year at Stargate. She goes to Stargate, so. Oh, okay. Why have you decided to make STEM Lab your home? Um, when I was searching for schools to do my student teaching at, I wanted, you know, in high school I did a STEM-like program, um, actually at M12, um, at Legacy, I did the Legacy 2000 program, which is not a STEM program, but it's STEM-like, and so I am not a creative, like, artsy person, but I have, um, there's other ways to express your creativity, and I did that in science and math, um, so I wanted to be able to teach students who were like me, who, I mean, you don't have to be artsy to, or artsy and creative in arts, you can be creative in other ways, and that's, I wanted to allow my students to be creative in their own ways, and so I thought STEM would be a great way to do that. So. Awesome. Um, speaking of STEM lab, what is the best part of your job? my relationships with my students and my colleagues um, i value relationships with uh, people a lot i love learning about people and connecting with them and i think my biggest thing is my relationships with students and their families too i love the families who are at stem too and so i really value those relationships with students um, and just getting to know them i love getting to know people and especially little six-year-olds five six and seven-year-olds um, I connect with them on that, so. Awesome, and I, I'm seeing you with your class. I know that your class always loves you. Um, the last one for me for a little bit is, what is one positive thing that has come from the quarantine? Um, I think it is my relationship with my husband. Um, we have been able to kind of slow down because we've, you know, ever since we've been married, we've been, we bought a house right away. We've been working on the house. We've been working on, doing all these other things and um, we've been able to kind of slow down and kind of learn more about each other and get get to know each other better even and also work on projects around the house and not have to rush with them so kind of just slowing down and taking it back taking a step back from everything awesome awesome mr santella do you want to take it over yeah i'll jump in here so um now we're gonna get into some questions that are just kind of more specific to you. So um, what has been the biggest difference for you from year one to year two in teaching? 
Um, that's a tough question. Um, I think my confidence. Um, the first year I was always questioning what, if I was doing it correctly, if I was teaching right, if I, I kind of felt like an imposter. Like I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. I had to pretend like I knew what I was doing. And um, the second year I feel more confidence in that what I am doing is correct and what I am doing is the best for the students and for my class and the school in general. So I think it's my confidence level. Awesome. And, and just being in your classroom last year and being in your classroom this year, I can see that. I can feel it, um, that your confidence has, has grown exponentially. You do not carry yourself as a second year teacher, um, which I think uh, really, you know, shows that growth that you have in your confidence and your ability to teach. So um, I would agree with that just from an outsider's perspective. So thank you. All right. If you weren't a teacher, what would you be doing or what would you be right now? Um, I think there's a couple different things. I think one would be working with some kind of working with animals because I'm obsessed with my dogs. If um, you've been in my class or you know me, you know that I'm obsessed with my two, my, 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 I call my children. Um, and so something with animals or dogs, because I love animals in general, um, except for snakes. Um, I don't, I don't value, I don't like snakes very much. But um, something with animals, because I've always had a passion for animals and loving them and um, so working with them or something with Disney. As you can tell with my Disney stuff, um, it would be hard for me to move away from my family to go work at Disney and probably Disney World um, in Florida, but probably something to do with Disney. Excellent. So. All right. All right. Um, so how did you become such a Disney junkie? Um, I grew up going to Disney my whole life. Like my family, we would always go to Disney World. Um, we, towards when I was probably my teenagers, we would go once a year. Um, and so I think I just fell in love going and going to Disney World and we would always watch the movies and everything. And so just my, I, I love the parks. I love going to the parks. I love people watching there. I love the feeling you get when you walk into Magic Kingdom and you you smell the they they push um, scents they push um, cookie scent into the the parks, so you get all five senses when you walk in. Like you just hold on, feel... I, they push scents yeah. into the park. Yep. So when you walk into Magic Kingdom, <laughs> they want you to feel all five senses. Wow. That's how I have I no idea. Yep. Me that's how. I Disney is. So you got to oh, go to the well. experts. You got to go to the experts. Right? Yep. That's right. So, Excellent. Um, that feeling you get, I get when I walk into Magic Kingdom is like, is the best feeling in the whole entire world. That's amazing. Um, all right. Yeah. So I have another question for you, but I got it for this question. I got to do a, a wardrobe change. Oh, Nikki. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to get your thoughts on the movie Fantasia. Um, in Hollywood studios, they have a phantasmic um, show that they do at nighttime. So that's their, that's Hollywood studios nighttime show. And that's actually one of my husband's favorite shows that they do at Disney. We're talking about that. So I, I like it because of the, there's no talking and it's all visual and you get to kind of imagine what they would be saying if they're, if they could talk. So. Yeah, I feel very similar. It's, it's, it's a different experience engaging in that movie as opposed to the traditional you know disney kind of storyline so yeah i just yeah. i had to ask because it's one of those like classics but it's so different so you yeah. know i had to ask the expert so i, I might right. watch it soon it's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> all right uh your first disney movie you remember um probably cinderella just okay. because she's my favorite, she's my favorite Disney um, princess. And so, yeah, probably Cinderella, I would have to say, because I always wanted to be Cinderella when I was growing up. Excellent. And I still do, so. All right. Um, how many times have you been to a Disney park? Which Disney park? A, any Disney park. Okay, so can I, do you just want me to tell you all the Disney parks I've been to? Because I don't sure. know. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, I, this past summer, I went to Disney Tokyo, or I went to Tokyo, and we went to 
um, Disneyland Tokyo, and then we also went to, they have Disney Seas, because they have two parks in Tokyo. Um, fun fact, those are the only two parks that are not owned by Disney, fully owned by Disney. Oh. Um, they are owned by the Oriental Land Company or Japan. Um, they're the only franchise Disney owns, or Disney has. Um, and then growing up, when I was in about second grade, we went to Euro Disney. Um, so I've been to Disney on Paris. And then I have been to Disneyland in California, both Disneyland, uh, California Adventure and Disneyland. I think I've only been there about three or four times. And then I've been to Disney World, um, all four parks about, I would say 25 times. So is so. it safe to say you've been to Disney parks in general over 30 times? Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Good for you. That's awesome. All right. Um, tell us about your work with Special Olympics. Um, okay, so I started helping with Special Olympics when I was about eight years old. Um, I started as a one-to-one -one peer because I was on the swim team and my coach, um, I went to school with a girl with autism um, and my coach asked if I wanted to be a one-to-one -one peer, my swim coach asked if I wanted to be a one-to-one -one peer with her in the, on the swim team and I said, sure, why not? Because um, I was, I was um, in her, they had a circle of friends with um, students with autism or any sort of special needs, um, had a circle of friends with our counselor. And so I grew up going to circle of friends with her. And um, so then I joined Special Olympics or joined the swim team. And then I got on, did the one-to-one -one peer. And then um, I, after that, every year I would start volunteering with swimming. Um, and then when I was about 15 or 16, I became the assistant coach um, of the team. And then when I was about 18, I would say I became the head coach. Um, another girl and I are both the head, we're co head coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just never stopped. I mean, except for this year, we have to not do it this year. But yep. um, so I've helped with sw swimming and then I've then kind of branched off and helped with bowling. Um, I've been a bowling coach, mostly just making sure that they don't bowl for each other. Um, I can't really coach much. I don't know much <laughs> about bowling, um, but making sure they don't bowl for each other. Um, and then I've helped with a game night on Saturday nights to the Broomfield Recreation Center. Um, it's a game night for parents to, or families to drop off their student or athlete or participant, whoever it is. Um, with special needs and we do a game night where they can interact socially and kind of just to hang out nothing too structured so they can have that social interaction with each other um and then what else have i done just various things through um therapeutic rec through this city of broomfield amazing well that is such an amazing uh, i don't want to call it a hobby but just something yeah. additional that you give to the environment or to the the community around you so it, that's amazing yeah. I, I love it. I mean, awesome. it's crazy to think that I've been doing it for over 20 years now. Um, I feel, but it's something that I value and I cherish. And those relate, again, that relationship piece with those athletes and participants is, is why I do it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it, it, that's just an amazing, that speaks to your character. And, um, you know, like I said, that comes out in your teaching and in your classroom community that you have, just the, the connection you make with anybody that's in your room. So um, I just want to compliment you on that. And it's good to learn like, kind of where this is coming from, too. So, all right. Um, please tell us about your love of dogs, particularly puppies. Um, I think it came from my grandparents and my, because my grandpa both of them, my, my, I only had one set of grandparents growing up, my dad's parents, um, they always had dogs, and my grandma always, um, she always kept treats in her pocket for her dogs, and so they've always been a part of our family, and growing up, I always, we always had a dog, at least one, at um, a couple, at one point, we had three, um, and so I just, I think, I don't see dogs as animals or pets, I see them as family members, mm -hmm. um, and I, you can probably tell by the way I talk to my dogs or I talk about my dogs. Um, and so I just, I, they, they're an addition to a family rather than just a pet. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think they, they all have emotions and they all have very similar emotions to humans. And so that's a way for, I, for me to connect with them is um, I can see when they're sad and they can see when humans are sad too. And they, they can help you with that. 
too. So, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. All right. Well, are you ready for the lightning round? Okay. Yes. All right. So this is, I have nine questions for you and it's just answer your first instinct, uh, your gut response, whatever it is, that is what we want to hear. Sound okay. good? Yes. All right. One more. Um, oh. <laughs> I know. Right. So yeah, I, I got to show one you, on for you I got to show you this. This is older than both of you. That's amazing. Okay. Right. This is. The, were those your first Mickey ears? 30. Yep. So this is 30. Um, 32 years old. So. Awesome. Wow. Yep. That's the original like Mickey right there. Oh yeah. This is. It won't even fit because my head is so ginormous does now. Have the, does it have the neck strap even? Nope. No strap. That's amazing. Nothing. So this thing is as old school as it gets. So for the lightning round, I'm going to sport this. See if it stays on. Okay. That's awesome that you still have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know how I found it, to be honest with you. I was going through some stuff, and it just kind of popped out. I was like, oh, perfect. So. But you don't mm -hmm. have a Disney box? Um. Well, I have memory boxes for my kids, and they're filled with Disney stuff, so kind of. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, okay. favorite Disney movie? Meet the Robinsons. Mickey or Minnie? Minnie. Goofy or Donald? Goofy. Aladdin or The Lion King? Lion King. I laugh hard when... Wait, one more time. I laugh hard when... Blank. Somebody tells a funny joke. The best ride at Disneyland. Um, Space Mountain. The best ride at Disney World. Space Mountain. Ooh. All right. Disney World or Disneyland? Disney World. Okay. The name of the canine that Mr. Tyler brings to see you is? Storm. Yeah! <laughs> 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 excellent excellent great work great work all right mr tyler i'm going to turn it back over to you well miss morris it was so good to be able to talk to you it was so good to see you um we're happy that you're staying safe and staying healthy um anything that you would like to say to our stem community to your students anybody the floor is yours give about one last message Okay, well, first of all, I want to just tell you guys how much I miss you. I miss seeing my students. I miss teaching um, in person. I mean, I've been teaching remotely, but miss teaching in person, miss teaching, um, having those interactions with my students um, as a class, as a group, as um, in small groups, individually, and seeing the families after, after school. So I miss everyone. I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, I can't wait to see you guys all again soon. Um, in person and give everyone a big hug and um, get back to kind of normal life before all this. So it was fun to hang out with you guys and answer all these questions. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks for giving us some of your time. We know you're super busy. Um, so until we see you again, thanks for coming on. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.